Hey everybody, it's Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Netrunner KDE. It's a version of Linux that's been around quite a while. But first, before we get started, please like and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. Plus, I'm announcing a new giveaway. We will be giving away a Dell XPS 13. That's right. So if you like and you subscribe to my channel, you'll automatically be entered into that giveaway. Here in a little bit, I will tell you who won the Asus ZenBook 14 giveaway. So hang on tight. That information's coming. But right now, we're on the Netrunner website. As you can see, they have a lot of different versions of the distribution. You've got Desktop, Core. They even have Netrunner for the Pinebook. They have Netrunner for Odroid, which is your Android boxes. And then they got the latest news and information and then Netrunner download stats at the bottom, 93 daily, 722 weekly, 3,400 monthly, a total of 633,000 this year. But there's a lot of information there. So let's close on out of that and let's go look at the desktop. When you first boot up Netrunner, this is what you're looking at. You've got the Netrunner wallpaper, which is pretty impressive. Let's see or what other wallpapers they might have. You get three out of the box. For a KDE distribution, kind of low, but that helps keep the ISO image low. You can run with what you got, or you can download more wallpapers down here, or put something on there you would rather see. Up top, you've got Install Netrunner, you've got Readme, you've got Network, and you've got My Computer. Down at the bottom, you have the normal looking KDE panel. Right here, you've got Console, you've got Show Desktop, you've got Volume Controls, you've got your Ethernet connection, you've got your battery if you're on a laptop, and then you've got your USB. Then you've got your hidden icons, which you can go right here, and it'll show your keyboard indicator, disk quota, clipboard. Then you've got time, you can add the date to that if you want to, and then you've got your information. Now if you want to make changes to your panel, all you gotta do is right click. You've got panel options. You can configure the panel if you would like. That way you can make changes. You can change the screen edge, you can change the height. All you gotta do on this version is just grab it and drag it up or down to change the height. You can add widgets. It'll bring your widgets up here. That's just different things you can do on KDE. So right off the bat, you've got your file manager down here. Let's open that up. It's Dolphin, and this one's set up a little different. You've got your folders here, and then once you go to your folders, it'll give you an explanation of what they are over here. You've got Home, Desktop, Downloads, Root, Trash, Network, Netrunner Desktop. You can right click here. You can change your icon size if you want from small, medium to large. You can change that to large if you want. And then if you want to change the size of these icons, all you got to do is drag this bar down here and it'll make them bigger and smaller. You can show hidden files if you want. You can shut that off. Everything's just a click away. Normal, solid. Dolphin is a great file manager. I think you'll be happy with that. So let's go ahead and close that out. And then you've got Firefox. Let's go over here and open the menu launcher. And you've got all your application, recent applications, recent documents, all applications or games. Games, you get Burger Space Chess, Frozen Bubble, GLTron, GNU, DOQ, K Breakout, K Mahjong, K Mines, K Snake Duel, Steam. Graphics, you've got GIMP out of the box. You've got Gwynview, Inkscape, Krita, Scanlight, Internet. You've got Firefox, KDE Marble, Pigeon Internet, Transmission, Skype, Thunderbird. And then on Multimedia, you've got Audacious Cheese, G Music Browser, Handbrake, Caden Live, which is important if you do video editing. It's got Caden Live right out of the box. Pulse Audio Volume, SM Player, Yay Rock, Office, you've got LibreOffice Suite, you've got Office, you've got Calc, Impress, Writer, Settings, App Image Launcher, if you've got a app that you want to run but it's not available in Downloads, you can go online, download the app image, put it into your App Image Launcher and you'll be able to run it just like an executable. Grub Customizer, Kvana Manager, System Settings, Server, you've got System, you've got your Discover, which is Software, Dolphin, Info Center, Install System, KDE Partition Manager, Console, KSysGuard, KWallet, Network Drive, Synaptic Package Manager, Update Manager, Utilities. You've got Ocular Spectacle, SUS Image. This is Studio right here. The SUS Studio Image Writer is really good because if you're already running Linux on your system and you want to download and try a different flavor of Linux, all you got to do is download it, get you a USB. SUS Studio Image Writer will write it to the USB. Web, you got HookTube, you got OpenDeskOrg, Skype, Telegram, WhatsApp, and then Power on and off. So let's go over and check out system settings. Let's run that up here. You've got account details. You can go in here and set up your account. You've got language, accessibility, KDE wallet. You got your online accounts you can go in and set up. You can create your Google accounts, Microsoft accounts, if that's something you want to do. 
Then you got plasma tweaks. You go in here. This is where you can make changes to your desktop, what you're running. Let's see, if I wanted to go Netrunner Black, I could click on that and apply, and it changes everything to Netrunner Dark Mode. You've got your desktop theme that you can change, whatever you want to change in there, desktop effects, widget styles, window decorations, cursor theme, colors, icons, and then genome application style. So let's go back out of this. And then, of course, you've got workspace behavior, user manager, date and time, startup shutdown, shortcuts, adjustments to display, just your basic settings that you're going to see in a KDE environment. Let's close that out. Let's type in software. Discover Software Center. Okay, you opened up the Software Center. Basically what it does is it gives you a list of everything that's already installed. Those are right there. Now you can go down here to install. You can go to settings. Right here it will tell you what repositories you have. You've got Buster Backports, which is based on Debian. Netrunner Desktop 2101 Extras. Stable Main. Skype Stable. Stable Main Contribution. Stable Updates. Stable Updates. So you have all of that right there. Now you can go up to applications and it gives you a list of applications that you can install or you can search into applications. Let's try OBS and there's OBS right there. You could download it and install it on your system. So that's your Discover Software Center in Netrunner. So let's go back down and let's show you Synaptic Package Manager. Okay, once you've got Synaptic open up, anybody who's familiar with Debian based or Ubuntu operating systems, you can just go up here, type something in, and there's OBS Studio right there. If you want to do it from Synaptic as opposed to the Discover Software Center, you can do it right here. Right out of the box, Netrunner's got a lot of useful tools, and it might be a KDE version that you want to look at, especially seeing how it's based on Debian Stable. Now, we'll just want to take a break for a second and let you know, last night at 8 p.m. Central, we drew for the winner of the Asus ZenBook 14, and that winner's name is Isabel Davis. So, Isabel Davis, all you got to do is send me an email. I've already sent you one. The minute I hear back from you, we'll get all the shipping information and have that sent to you. If for some reason Isabel Davis does not claim or does not return the email, we will go to the second name on the list. And if she doesn't, I will notify all of you that she hasn't, and then we will go to the second name and I'll let you know who that was. I want to thank everybody for subscribing and helping build my channel, and I just want to thank you all for helping me reach what I'm trying to reach, and I appreciate you all being a part of the giveaway. Now, don't miss out on this next coming giveaway, which is the Dell XPS 13. Back to Netrunner. Netrunner is an awesome distribution. It's got a lot to choose from right out of the box. Let's go ahead and see what kind of system resources we're looking at right now. Okay, system load at present. I've got four CPUs assigned to this. System load at present, it spiked at about 50, but right now it's hovering about between 0 and 5. Your memory, it's using 0.76 of 1.9 gigabytes I've had assigned to it, which means it's using about 760 megabytes, which is pretty good at rest. And then last but not least, once you get it out and get it downloaded, if you've got it in a virtual machine or you have it installed, once you get it installed, it should notify you of updates. If for some reason it doesn't, you come over here to Systems, update manager click on that it'll bring your update manager up and it will tell you what you have ready to install you've got firmware and on free simple menu youtube downloader and linux signed amd 64. now as you can see these are checked this one isn't the higher number that you have under level is the higher chance that it might break your system basically threes and below you're pretty much safe with but this five this is the linux signed header files for the linux amd configuration meta package I wouldn't download that. What I would do is wait for a complete operating system update and then go from there. That way everything is in conjunction with each other. Having looked at that, Netrunner is a beautiful distribution. Like I said, it's been around for a while. It's based on Debian Stable. There's no such thing as a bulletproof distribution, but with Debian, it's pretty much bulletproof. If you would, please like and subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost anything. And if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. Also, if you do like and subscribe, you will be entered into the Dell XPS 13 giveaway that we're doing on October 31st, 2021. Thank you guys for watching the video and I will see you in the next video.